I feel like most Americans don't fully understand the Constitution. So today I'd like to actually go through it first for, for, for a moment with you. Before I go through it, I, I, I was thinking as these uh, Democrats are removing all the Confederate statues that maybe they are trying to provoke me into saying something because they, they remember a long time ago I, I really disagreed with removing the statue of Robert E. Lee because in my opinion, the greatest hero of the entire Civil War was Robert E. Lee. I know it's, it's hard to explain how a person that can swallow their pride like that, that has that kind of power, that becomes that important of a peacemaker matters. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, you said before that Robert E. Lee is your relative and Catherine the Great's your relative. And what I'll tell y'all is I'm clone. And when you're clone, um, it's not really your relative. All right, so, well, I mean, they, they are your relative. I don't, I don't know, I mean, it could be you. You don't even know who they are, but what I do know is Robert E. Lee's the type of man that can, that can bear the hatchet during a very, very difficult time. And you know what, the Civil War is very, very important. And you know what, the Civil War started under different circumstances than it ended. People say it was about slavery. It was actually a very complicated war. It was about states' rights a lot for a lot of people. All right, so the First Amendment, everyone knows that. Um, you have the right to free speech, press, assembly, the right to petition, you can go talk to the government. Um, and that's what I've been doing lately, letting the government know, hey, just so you guys know, the Supreme Court's fascist. They don't care about how easy this Constitution right here is to read. Because listen to this. The Second Amendment gives the citizens the right to bear arms. It ain't the right to go hide your gun. It's a, the right to have a gun. And um, personally, I do believe in limitations on people having guns, but I do believe that for, a lot, for, for, for some people it is important they have the right to have a gun, and I'm very grateful for the Second Amendment. Third Amendment, um, government can't put troops in your house. And all these amendments are, were written for a reason, because fascists, people don't understand. Do you, you know the, 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 the Declaration of Independence? In the event that blah, 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 that a, a king is a fascist, Remember all that shit? Yeah, that, that's written because kings have been fascists over and over and over again. And that's why when I see myself having a chance to join Antifa, I'm thinking, well, you know what? I sure, I sure, I sure hear that, that, that their government saying that them Antifas are a bunch of terrorists, but you know what I know? I, I'm against the fascists. So let's see here. Um, Fourth Amendment protects citizens from unreasonable sort search and seizure. Government may not conduct any searches without a warrant, and such warrant must be issued by a judge and, and based on probable cause. The thing about that, that is a very specific amendment. You know, it's not just search and seizure, it's like warrants and stuff, because the, the, the founding fathers understood that for a long time, them British red coats walking in there doing whatever the fuck they want, taking shit, shooting people if they were protesting, that's why you have the right to, right to assemble. Because what happened with that Boston Massacre? Alright, so I know, I know everyone's gonna get bored, but I have a right to a speedy trial with a jury of my peers. Huh, but it sure seems like the government's almost like picking their, their, the, the jury nowadays. It's kind of weird how the government's getting. It's because they're kind of becoming fascist. But all right, let me, did that happen? All right, so uh, citizens may not be subject to criminal prosecution and punishment without due process. So. Um, yeah, and, and, and double jeopardy's in there. Um, you have a right to a trial by jury. I ain't seen no jury. I ain't heard no charges. I have the right to know my charges. I haven't seen that. Um, pr prohibits excessive bail, excessive fines, and cruel and unusual punishment. It's like, all right, well, that, that, that definition, that, that, that term right there is real debatable. All I'm saying is when you read this Constitution right here, it's real easy, right? I don't think people understand that. And so when, when everyone's like, oh my gosh, all them constitutional law professors out there at Harvard sitting there rubbing each other's nipples and talking about how smart they are, what they don't understand is it's not written for smart people. It's written for people that go, okay, the 10th Amendment assigns all powers not delegated to the United States or prohibited to the states to either the states or the people. Okay, so it says, okay, what I'm not including in here, I'm giving, I'm giving that power to the people. And that's when we're talking about federal law. Like, this ain't, ain't got no, the Eighth Amendment says it's legal to murder people. Mm -mm. This is how we protect ourselves from the government. And when the government becomes fascist, like say that the government gets together and says, okay, the First Amendment says this, 
we're gonna rule this in secret and not tell anyone that we can prohibit First Amendment rights without alerting anyone that we're censoring them. Would that be fascist? Of course. So, um, yeah, I think I think that's I think I got my point across there. Um, you know, it's real hard trying to run for real hard, real hard trying to run for pipeline. Okay, I, I, I ain't no good, I ain't no good um, speaker. But you know what I am? I'm someone that knows one thing: that if you are trying to put someone in jail now, but you wasn't before, and that person's suddenly a political candidate and he's saying things you don't like, but he was nice to you because people told him, "Be nice to President of the United States." People like literally walked up to my ass. I'm talking about like I'm I'm a I was a college tutor. You know what I'm talking? What was your last job before you were president? My last job where I had a boss that was actually around me. Uh, I, I was a I was I tutored writing. That's what I did. I got paid very little. And someone walked up to me and said, "Be nice to Donald Trump," because they were worried I was going to get put in jail. Because Donald Trump will get revenge. So I learned from people. Hinting, and I even told told my aunt at one point. I, I I knew she would hate Donald Trump. I told her, I said, "Don't be mean to Donald Trump." And so, as a family, we had to be had to be nice to this guy for a while. But things I don't know if y'all seen the Huffington Post. They had this article about how there was this con artist named Trump in this story. It was a it was a television show a long time ago, and I've always kind of wondered if Donald Trump was a was an evil clone. Uh, I always think everyone's an evil clone, and then I, and then sometimes I think it's not very hard to find people that are evil, so you don't really need to have clones. But the, the, the con artist's name was Trump. It's kind of weird. I don't know. I, I I don't believe in antichrist type stuff, but I do believe that the Bible kind of alludes to what's going to happen. And I think that man's a perfect antichrist.